do good work is not a label, but a way of living. It is the constant and diligent effort to achieve a new level of excellence in one's own life. It is the hidden inner beauty behind the struggle to achieve excellence. It's not perfect, but imperfect. It is the effort, discipline, and focus that often goes unnoticed. The goal of Do Good Work is to highlight that drive. The guests I have on this show emulate this drive in their own special way. You'll be able to apply new ideas into your own life by learning from them. We will also have one-on-one episodes with me where we'll dive into my own experience with entrepreneurship and leadership. Every episode is designed to provide you with ideas that you can apply and grow in excellence in all areas of your life, business, and career. Today on Do Good Work, we have Nikki Krasik. Nikki has over 15 years of experience copywriting, and she's written for multi-billion dollar companies, solopreneurs, and every size of business in between. She also coaches people to become professional copywriters and build thriving careers. She does this from her website and her flagship course, the Comprehensive Copywriting Academy. In 2021, Nikki and her team created a second resource for freelancers called Fired Up Freelance and a training course, Freelance Success Frameworks, where it serves freelance or potential freelancers up with proven step-by-step guidance for building a career that they love. Nikki's on a mission to create a portfolio of high quality programs and courses to help you take control of your career and take care of the ones you love. Nikki, thank you so much for being on. Thank you so much for having me. I love being able to discuss and kind of go into the backstory of entrepreneurs who started in the online space early on. And one of the things that I recently published and released to one of my like private groups is how to leverage your IP. Like every single company has their own intellectual property, but being able to package that and deliver that to the marketplace um, is not only, you know, leverage for continued growth, for scale, if you're doing services, um, this is like either info or software, but also being able to reach a wider market and greater, greater impact. And with what you've been doing with copywriting and now with freelance, like you've been able to do that. So I'd love to dive into your journey about, you know, how do you identify the need in the marketplace, how you package your IP and I guess kind of like the journey to get to the point where you're at right now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a long journey. I mean, I, uh, I am a, a copywriter, also obviously an entrepreneur, business owner, um, and I've been a copywriter for more than 15 years now, um, working for big companies, small companies, all kinds of different companies. Um, and about eight years ago, I realized that, uh, well, eight years ago, I ended up having to build a copywriting team from people who didn't have uh, a background in copywriting. They had some knowledge of writing, some you know affinity for it, but didn't really know how to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I ended up essentially in a way, kind of putting together a course where every day we would meet, we would talk about principles, they would bring in uh, examples, we would talk it through, talk about what worked, what didn't. Um, And after they were up and running and I could give them copywriting projects, uh, I thought, you know what, maybe I should create this on a bigger scale. Because when I was getting started, um, I was very lucky in that I learned a lot about copywriting from my father, who was a marketing director at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, So very, very lucky. Uh, But most people don't have fathers or mothers that are marketing directors and that can teach them how to do this. Um, And so what I ended up creating was uh, the Comprehensive Copywriting Academy. And I kind of packed it with basically everything I would have wanted to know when I was getting started. And for my first couple of years, everything from how to write copy to, you know, how to find clients, how to build your experience, like all of that stuff that you actually need to have to -hmm. build a successful career. So that's kind of how the, the comprehensive copywriting Academy came to be. And then actually uh, recently we have just uh, launched a course for people who want to be freelancers of, of any type Mm -hmm. Um, because what works so well for our copywriters uh, can just as easily be applied to, to any field in which you want to, to freelance. Yeah. So it's really kind of. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So there you go. Taking what I knew and turning it into something for a, for a broader audience. I think that's important too, because one of the things that you've, you've, you've mentioned, and I think it's important for audience to know is that you started this as internal training to serve clients or to serve, you know, the, the, 
the workflow that you had coming in. Now that's important for two reasons. One, like right now, what in, what are for our audience, what are you doing in your company right now to make sure that the next hire knows exactly how you do what you do, what you do and why you do it and who you do it for. And I think within those principles, you will find themes that, hey, this might help people who are either not ready to, if you're doing services, buy from our services, maybe this can be a low tier package. I know I had a, a, a guest who was selling that for around, I think $2,500 where they couldn't invest into the service, but they were selling the information, the how to do it yourself. And then once you're ready, we can actually support you in order to do it for you. So I think it's important to start there. And I'm seeing cross parallels as well, like creating my like annual program. I'm seeing both like, well, it makes sense that this is gonna be helpful for the end user, but as the team, if the team grows, this is going to be imperfect for them just to go through training and doing this. So I love that you were able to kind of identify that. What made you, um, what made you excited about creating? And you know, the the C word of course is has such an, uh, a negative connotation since I don't know twenty fourteen for some reason. But I think that there's so much value with delivering real, like jam packed education and information that gets results. And that's the key distinction that you're doing is that you actually have gotten results. You have the real world experience, not just, I took a, someone else's course and now I'm an expert, right? So it's, yeah. So yeah. Then what made you like want excited to actually create and package that into an online medium of a course? Yeah. Well, you know, um, the first thing was probably that. So I got the the marketing from my dad, from my dad's side. And my mom um, was a, they're both retired now, but my mom was a, an interior designer, but she was, she was freelance. She was, she learned how to do it. And then she was out on her own. So I think I got that entrepreneurial spirit from her. So I got a, a good mix, exactly what I needed from both of them. <laughs> um, but really it was the fact that after I finished teaching them, uh, teaching my team and they were, they were chugging along and doing great work. I thought, God, there's really nothing out there. If someone were to come to me and say, Hey, I want to learn how to be a copywriter like you, where do I go? What do I do? There mm -hmm. was no place that I could direct them to that would actually teach real world skills. You know, there were at the time, and there unfortunately still are a couple of courses that teach you how to write like online sales letters, which nobody actually writes anymore. <laughs> um, and so there was no real place that I could have directed someone to go. And I thought, you know what, this is, this is an opportunity. And the, the funny thing is, is that copywriting, once you're in the entrepreneurial space, you understand how important copywriting is and you understand um, how prevalent it is. But outside of the entrepreneurial space or the marketing or advertising space, very few people people actually know what copywriting is, which is mm -hmm. a travesty because there are people who love to write walking around every day thinking, oh, I can't make any money as a writer. Oh, if I want to be a writer, I'm always going to be poor. Um, and that is not the case when it comes to copywriting. You know, we're paid very well to write. I mean, it's a very specific set of skills, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just, it's something that I knew more people needed to know about and would find valuable when they did know about it. Yeah, you're pretty much like uh, Dan Kennedy's where we're knowing what copywriting is, but citizens don't like the, the citizens of like day to day, like, what is that? And it's a, it's a hidden scale and it's extremely important. Every word, how you say, it, where you position it, how you speak, your pricing, the whole nine yards. It's like, it's not just one thing. It's all these things interwoven. You know, I'm curious. So as you started growing the program and started getting more students enrolled and making sure that their success rates continue, what were some of the hurdles that you faced and what were some of the mindset? that you had in place in order to overcome that. Yeah. You know, I, so I started the business eight years ago and it really wasn't, I mean, I, the, I'm very proud to be able to say that we have always been, been helping students. And from, from the very beginning, people were able to, to get work and, and land, uh, land jobs, which is wonderful. Um, but from the business side, from the entrepreneurial side, it really wasn't until like two getting close to three years ago now that the business really took off mm -hmm. and, and when I talk to entrepreneurial friends or when I, I give advice to newer entrepreneurs, um, it really, and it's so funny because I spent so many years being like, oh, mindset, mindset's so important. Oh, sure. Mindset. And like, no, just tell me how to do it. I'll figure out the mindset. But really fundamentally what it came down to for me was the mindset of actually, but not like, oh, I'm going to manifest, you know, whatever. Um, it was actually treating my business like a business and 
holding myself accountable and holding the the my metrics accountable and the way that a, a CEO would. You know, when you are starting a business, uh, it, it can be very easy to kind of like, I'm working really hard and you know what, I'm, I don't really want to do this yet. So I'm just going to put it off or I'm going to, mm, ah, you know, um, but what I realized was that if I was truly going to be the CEO of my business, if I were the CEO regarding myself as the employee, I would have fired myself. You know, the <laughs> fact that I was like, mm, I don't know, you know, or even just Facebook, Facebook ads. I remember saying to a friend of mine, like, well, I'm, I'm spending 10, $15 a day on Facebook ads. Why aren't I seeing huge results? And of course, <laughs> now, of course, we know how, how hilarious that is. But, yeah. um, but the fact that I was spending, spending the company's money, but not mm -hmm. understanding my metrics, again, the CEO me now, obviously, I gave me another chance, but the CEO me would have fired this girl, right? So once I finally stepped into that role of, okay, what is most important for the business and what do I have to, you know, and I'm not saying that it's always push and, you know, hard and all that kind of thing, but like, all right, what are your goals? How are you going to hit them? What are your metrics? And really understanding that and embracing the fact that my business was in fact a business, that was really where the breakthrough came from. So I guess it wasn't just mindset, it was executing, but I definitely had to look at my business from, from a different angle. Shift the perspective. And we can, like, I love that you mentioned, like, it's not manifesting something. It's okay. Looking at it with, through a different lens. And I think that's the most important thing also for our listeners. Like when you're looking at your business, are you treating it legitimately? Like, like it should be treated. Are you skipping corners because you can, or are you saying, you know what, let me look at this through a different attitude. Let's maybe replace the word mindset and just call it an attitude and mm -hmm. taking this, this is for real. I'm setting the expectations. And if you're expecting your business, or if you're working with the expectation to have a certain level of success, a certain level of impact, you will reach that. But if you're treating it like it's a side hustle, or, you know, we'll grow when we grow, or, you know what, the things are okay. They, it's, this is fine like then you're setting the expectation that that's where you're going to be and you will meet that expectation guaranteed, but you won't meet the next level depending on how you view your business and the attitude and the drive because we didn't just sit and think. We saw it, we, we, we saw it, we thought, and we took action, right? That's the key thing. That's the key yeah, thing there. Absolutely. Well, it's, it's so easy, especially when you're doing it by yourself. I mean, you remember it was like when you're doing it by yourself to be like, oh, I really should do this today, but oh, it's kind of scary. I'm intimidated <laughs> by it. So I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it the day after or whatever. And which is not to say that we don't still do it every once in a while, but um, you know, when, when it's something that needs to be done, you kind of have to suck it up <laughs> and just do it. The discipline. It's definitely, I remember um, listening to Ari Mizell. We had him on the show as well. And he's, he's saying, we somehow think that we'll have more time later. When is that? <laughs> Where is that time? <laughs> and then that's hilarious. But diving into, so you're doing this and then you're growing. And then now you're focusing on a specific, almost open wide like your, your marketing niche. So in the beginning, you focus specifically, I'm going to help copywriters. I'm going to serve them the best that they can, because I think it's important. I had questions so like, Hey, where can I have my copywriters train? I think that's still an issue or like, still like, where do we go? Right. And instead of learning these courses or these VSLs or stuff like that, like where do we go to actually learn the principles? And that's key. But then you saw that you solved that problem. But now you're looking at how can I reach a wider market? What made you want to expand obviously without the, the obvious reasons of, hey, there's more market opportunity, total available market, but what made you want to continue to expand to a larger, wider audience? Yeah, it's um, it's definitely interesting because it is a different, targeting would-be copywriters is a challenge because you're basically targeting people who don't like their job and who love to write. And unfortunately, Facebook doesn't have that interest yet. Um, so that's been- Disclose uh, to the public. <laughs> yeah, exactly, unfortunately. Um, so that was an interesting challenge, but you know, we, we had so much, we've seen so much success. And I don't just mean on a business side, but on our student side, you know, we, it's, it's, it's so funny that when I started my, started my business, because I did want it to put out something that people would use. Um, but I don't think that I really realized what the impact would be. Like I, I have, I am so, I don't want to say, I don't want to sound cheesy, but I'm so honored 
to be honored and humbled to be a part of people's like career journeys. Mm -hmm. You know, students will come back to us and say, this is amazing. Like I quit my full-time job. I'm doing this now. I'm making more money than I ever have before. Or I was interviewing um, someone who's, who's become a coach. And he said, oh, you know, last year I was furloughed from my job and you saved Christmas. And of course I said, no, I I did not save Christmas. You You saved saved Christmas. Christmas. (laughs) You took the action. I just, I just gave you some, some steps today. You actually did it. But, um, but to be a part of that is so cool. And I think I just didn't realize that before I started the business, like what, what the actual impact would be. Mm -hmm. And I'm really looking forward to, to expanding that because there is so much, um, so much bad information about going freelance. And so many people who think, well, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go freelance, quote unquote, go freelance. And once I just tell people the work is going to come to me or, you know, or worse, they're like, well, I'll just go on Upwork or I'll go on Fiverr and I'll find jobs there. And Mm -hmm. what a recipe for disaster that is. Um, So I'm, I'm really looking forward to taking our formula that we know the framework that we know works and just expanding that audience, opening up to, to more people outside Mm -hmm. of the copywriting arena. You know, I love that because you mentioned frameworks and you're like, you're scaling horizontally when it comes to this is a proven methodology based on principles. And that's really smart. So again, for the audience, like if you're looking to where you're serving right now, you can either niche down vertically for I'm going to focus on this specific industry vertical um, outcome and just really go dig deep and go down, either down all the way to the bottom of the vertical and also ascend to different tiers, different layers, or you can go horizontal where you have frameworks and being able to identify those frameworks that can work across industries, but they are principle-based, but they're also for a similar outcome. So that's a way to still niche down without saying, hey, I'm going to focus on this pigeonhole over here and just stay there for a while, Uh, which works. There's no right or wrong, but I love that you were able to identify how you can continue to expand that impact. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, so we're talking, you know, information, we're talking adding value, we're talking transforming people's careers, not an easy task. Let's let's put it that way. You know, I had Marissa Murgatroyd on the podcast and she mentioned like an abysmal like rate of student success for online courses. And again, going back to the C word courses. So let's flip that on its head because I find you as someone who's positive sees the best out of things. So let's flip that statistic, like 90% of online courses get un- don't get consumed, right? Let's say you put out something, but 90% doesn't even get consumed. And like, what, then the question can arise, like, well, what's the point? Like, how do we enhance student engagement? How do we ensure that our, that our, you know, clients are going through this adding value, like what are some of the things that you've seen to increase success rate, but also a student experience? Well, you know, the thing is, is that um, buying a course is a lot like joining a gym Um, or, you know, back when we used to join gyms. um, And this is actually what I, I talk to my students a lot about this because it's, you, you pay the money and you're very excited and you see all this possibility and you dig in and, you know, you go to the gym and you go, maybe you go for like three hours and you're so excited. And the next day you're kind of burned out. So maybe you skip it. Maybe you go back. Maybe you don't, it, it's the, um, and actually the, the, what I did was I put a course within my course because I wanted people exactly a a mindset course within the course, because I wanted people to be prepared for what was going to come up. Um, You know, because people think motivation, motivation is going to drive me through. And I think it's um, Mel Robbins. I think the, the uh, speaker Mel Robbins says motivation is garbage. And she's a hundred percent right because not that it isn't fun and not that it isn't exciting, but you can't rely on motivation. Motivation intrinsically by its very nature is going to disappear. Mm -hmm. It's going to wane. It's like a high energy moment. And I think a lot of people expect that that high energy, that excitement is going to stay and it's going to carry them all the way through. And what I want my students to know immediately is that it's not, it's going to be really exciting and you're going to be super into it for a period of time. And then that motivation is going to disappear. And instead, what you need to be able to, to rely on is your commitment and your action. And so we talk about how to make commitments, how to sketch, structure your schedule so that you are 
um, it's a little bit easier for you to keep those commitments and how to take action when you don't feel like taking action, when, when that resistance pops up, you know, the Stephen Pressfield, the, the war of art, um, excellent book. Yeah. Um, but th- when that resistance comes up and you're like, oh, well, oh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't do this after all. Maybe I'm not meant to do, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. All the, like, you know, how insidious that resistance is to try to get you back into your comfort zone. Um, so I actually put a course into the core, into our main course. Our role mm-hmm. is kind of, you know, it's a little su- surprise bonus um, because if someone, I, I don't want someone coming into the course and expecting that they're going to be super excited the whole time and yay, it's, that's just not how, not how it works. And I think too, as adults, we, we forget what it's like to learn something new, you know, when we were little it kids, work. Yeah. exactly. When we were little kids, we had no problem not knowing anything, but, um, but as adults, we come into something brand new and we're, it sounds silly, but this happens to almost everybody that we get into something and we're like surprised that we don't know it already. You know, we bought a course <laughs> to learn how to do something. And then we get Amen. in and we're like, wait a minute, this is, this is kind of hard, you know? Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah. I remember when we, when I recently at a college, so like at fresh out of college, I don't know, six, what year are we in? Seven years. I don't even know. Anyways, I remember when we, I got out of college in the past, like we were, I was working on a finance, getting my securities license. So they have to do this intensive. I don't know how long, eight week training or something, six week training. But then I, it's fresh out of college. I'm like, cool. I know how to take exams or whatever. The first mock exam whooped me. (laughs) I got like an F and like, whoa, big, big like shift. And this was fresh out of like the student mindset of I know how to take courses. I know how to do this thing. I know how to apply that knowledge, but I literally got an F on the first exam. Like, oh no, that I had to put in the legit work and then learn how I learn to actually, you know, go on and pass it. But that was, uh, it is so interesting because it's so, it's such a parallel too. like, I remember like investing in programs. I'm like, oh, okay. And see how I mentioned it's an investment. I'm not spending. It's an investment. I think that anytime that you invest in yourself, you can easily multiply a 10 X like easily, if you actually know how to apply it. So, Mm -hmm. but investing in programs, I'm like, oh, why don't I know this already? And I, and I do see myself thinking through that. So you hit it on the, hit it on the head there. Yes. It's funny, isn't it? I don't, I I haven't quite figured out why it is yet, but it's almost every single person at some point is surprised that they find something, you know, there's some, some parts of the learning that, that they, they get right away. And then there are other parts that they're challenged by and everyone is surprised to be challenged. Um, and don't get me wrong. There's certainly things that I, that I do. And then I'm like, well, what, what, <laughs> why don't I already, I'm totally brand new to this, but why don't I already know how to do this? I don't know why it is. I couldn't, I couldn't explain it to you, but um, I want to make sure that our students know that that's going to happen. Cause if you are blindsided by that, it's so tempting to think, oh, well, gosh, maybe, like I was saying, maybe, maybe I'm not meant to do, maybe this means, maybe this is a sign that I'm not oh. meant to do this. And it's not, no, it's not a sign you're not meant to do it. It's just a sign that you haven't learned it yet. That's interesting. And also like when you mentioned earlier, hitting a wall or hitting like that, not wanting to do things. I think that goes back to like, you know, the motivation can help you, but it's not just one thing. You got to keep refueling that to knowing why your end outcome and get motivated with the process. Like, um, it's that funny feeling where I don't feel like, let's say having to write, let's just put it as a zap, having to write this, um, sale, I mean, no sales letter, but still like having to write this piece of copy. But then once you start doing the actions and getting into the flow, then you forget that you didn't feel like it and you actually feel like it now. So it's not mm-hmm. waiting until you feel like it, it's doing what you have to do. And that mm-hmm. does take a certain level of discipline. Like you mentioned in going in the gyms, which is the perfect analogy. Yeah. So it's, to- oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I, know, I was going to say, you know, I, I think something that has been that I try to hammer home with my students and quite frankly, sometimes I have to remind myself as well is that, you know, you, you don't, you don't get confident or you don't feel like it it's exactly what you were saying before you take the action, you get confident by taking the action. You mm-hmm. feel like doing it by taking the action. So if you are sitting around waiting to feel confident, waiting to feel inspired, waiting to feel, you know, it's, it's just, it's not going to happen. You need to take the action anyway. That's true. When do you feel most like a badass? Thinking about lifting the, the bar or lifting the bar. <laughs> mm-hmm, exactly. Or the moment after you do when you're like, damn, look at that. <laughs> look what I just lifted. 
<laughs> That's funny. That is funny. So you're, we're focusing on freelance and moving forward. I mean, everything is transitioning to either the gig economy. I remember I sat down uh, with a gentleman who was like growing an HR firm and the statistic, this was back in 2020 when you could still sit down with people and like have dinner. Um, this is back early in 2020 before the whole, the whole situation. And the statistic was maybe it's higher now, like around 51% of the workforce will have a side gig. We'll have freelance. So you're definitely hitting a huge opportunity in the marketplace. What excites you with what you've been seeing and what are some of the trends that you're seeing and looking forward to in the future? Yeah. Um, well, you know, as someone who has spent time on staff, who's contracted, who's, I mean, I've always freelanced. As long as I've been doing it, I've been, sometimes it would be freelance in the evening while I'm working a full-time job, but I've always freelanced. Um, I think that for the people who have traditionally stuck with full-time jobs and have not even considered freelance. I think that um, 2020 was really kind of a, a revelation. A lot of the things that, and I think it was it was coming for a while, I mean, not the, obviously not all the pandemic, but mm -hmm. um, this mindset shift was coming for a while where the the safe quote unquote safe jobs the traditional the traditional path um, is not so safe after all and I think a lot mm -hmm. of freelancers understand that and a lot of entrepreneurs understand that but I think a lot of people who are just kind of going to work doing their thing um, maybe intellectually understood it but unfortunately for better or for worse 2020 I think made a lot of people really understand that you can't rely on once you give up control of your income and control of your schedule and all that kind of thing, then they are truly in control, you know, and you can't rely on that full-time job. Um, which is not to say that full-time jobs, like I said, aren't great. I've certainly, I've certainly worked at some and really loved them, but I've always had freelance because you never know when you're going to need it. And the great thing is, is whether you want to do it full-time, whether you want to do it part-time, if you want to do it part-time and you need to, you can, you know, if God forbid you get furloughed or your business, your, your company, the company you work for goes under something like that, you can scale it up and you can scale it up fast and you can be, you know, maybe not immediately replace your income, but you can be okay. And I think a lot of people are realizing that they need, they need something in their back their back pocket and then for those people who are interested in in full time freelancing i think that this has also become kind of a, a revelation about like wow <laughs> we've been stuck at home for a year. What do I really want to do with my life? You know, mm -hmm. do I want to be going into an office every day or instead, do I want to be able to travel? Do I want to be able to take my spouse and kids and travel, but also still be working and not miss out on any income? Or do I just want to not have to worry about missing a kid's ball game or, or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that it's, this has opened up a lot of a lot of eyes in in new ways and people are kind of looking for ways to ways to change their lives and also ways to to protect themselves in the future yeah like how you mentioned that it's a, almost like an insurance package like it's it might happen it might not happen but what's there's only benefit to you if you do this there's only benefit for for doing that i i like to close with one question i'd love your insight on this just to see your perspective but uh how would you see the difference between freelance and entrepreneurship? Well, you know, it's, it's when you are freelance um, and, and specifically freelance, freelance for a company, for the, for the people that are going to pay you. I don't mean freelance, like I'm a freelance kids party planner and I work for people. I mean, freelance for companies. Mm -hmm. um, you are you are your own small company. And that is important to view yourself as a business owner. I kind of going back, <laughs> circling all the way back to the beginning of the conversation, you do need to take yourself seriously and you need mm -hmm. to take the actions that you don't always feel like taking. And then I think that that entrepreneurship is really kind of taking that to the next level is not just affecting your income, but affecting other people's lives, you know, offering some kind of transformation, whether that be through a course or a product or, or, a, or a service, and then eventually scaling up and maybe you are employing additional people or mm. employing other freelancers. So it's, I think entrepreneurship kind of takes it up to that next level. 
yeah, it's not like if or that. It's like it's all holistic, but again, going back to your goals and what you're trying to do. So I love that. Well, mm-hmm. Nikki, for our audience, what's the best place for people to want to thank you for this episode and also reach out to you and learn more about you? Thank you so much for for uh, for having me. It's been fun. Um, well, if they're interested in copywriting, um, definitely you can find us at filthyrichwriter.com and on social at Filthy Rich Writer. Um, and you can watch our free video training at uh, freecopywritingtraining.com. If on the other hand, you're interested in freelancing, we are ju- we like just launched as, and I just started the Facebook ads the other day. Um, but again, based on the proven training that has helped thousands of our copywriting students, uh, that's Fired Up Freelance. And you can find that .com and on the socials. And then they can go if they want to watch a video training for that, freefreelancetraining.com. Wonderful. We'll have those links in the show notes, Nikki. Thank you again. Thank you. 